All right, quick disclaimer. This video is intended to be a guide to learning and controlling directional air roll. By no means is it the one and only way to learn this mechanic. This is merely my take on learning it based on what I've come to learn about it myself. If you believe my methods or information conflict with what you've been taught or have learned, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always open to having my knowledge be challenged and would love to hear what you have to say. If you feel inclined to call me names, think I smell funny, or disapprove of my videos because I haven't made GC yet, then you're also encouraged to utilize the aforementioned comment section. Otherwise, let's talk about... There are multiple ways to control your car in the air while using directional air roll. For visual reference, I've commissioned a chart that explains what each input does based on your car's orientation. What's that mean? What do you mean? Uh, no, I, I got it. I'm uh, putting, some jerk didn't put... I know I what I, I, I mean, mean when I say it, what do you mean saying? Okay, jokes aside. Controlling and steering the car while using air roll requires awareness of your car's orientation, its momentum, and anticipating your next course of actions. Thankfully, this is something that can be trained. The downside, though, is that it can take a minute to get there. That's where anticipation comes in. Being able to anticipate what corrections you'll need to make before you have to make them are a massive component to total aerial control. But just like anything else, the more you learn, the more tools you'll develop to be successful. If you've been training these simple directional air roll touches and recoveries from the last video, then I trust you've been able to grasp most of the basic concepts up to this point. By keeping your adjustments both controlled and repetitive, you're building the fundamental building blocks to controlling directional air roll. The more you utilize the mechanic, the more familiar you'll become with what types of movements and adjustments you'll need to make in order to control the car and the rhythm in which they're used. Like I stated in the previous video, directional air roll is a more fluid and efficient way of controlling the car in the air as it doesn't force you to fight against pre-established momentum but rather shift it seamlessly. I found one of the things that helped me to understand it better was looking at it through the lens of a recovery mechanic mechanic. I say this because good recoveries themselves also require high levels of efficiency and anticipation, meaning the quicker you can recognize what needs to happen in order to regain control and maintain your momentum, the faster and more efficient your overall car control will be. But how do you train this? Well, my friends, let's get awkward. One of the simplest ways to train recoveries, other than grinding ones, of course, is free play. Spoiler, this also makes for a great warm up, so feel free to work this into your routine. Once loaded in, start by turning off ball cam, getting yourself up to supersonic, jumping, turning the car 180 degrees, then performing a backflip and canceling the flip as quickly as possible by pressing up on the stick, also known as a half flip. From here, use your directional air roll to roll the wheels back towards the ground and drive away. Once you get comfortable with this, it's time to start doing it at different rotation intervals and angles. After that, we want to start doing it towards the wall. Now, this time, the goal is to land as flush on the wall as possible with your your car, trying your best to maintain your speed and momentum. If you happen to land sideways or backwards, then good. We want this to happen from time to time. For sideways, holding power slide to keep speed on the landing is what you're aiming for, and then quickly getting the car turned around towards the direction you want to go. Same with backwards, only this time you should be holding reverse to maintain that momentum. These are great drills to help train yourself how to recognize your momentum and how to continue it versus landing awkward and losing it. Okay, cool tip bro, but that doesn't explain how to control directional air roll. Alright, on the surface, maybe not. But this ain't a half-assed tutorial. You're going to get both cheeks and the whole explanation. So the more you can master these micro adjustments and nuanced mechanics, the more prepared you're going to be in those situations when you don't have the luxury of time or space. So bear with me. I promise all this stuff makes a complete package and these routines have a ton of value. Now, the two most basic ways to turn the car left and right are... Um, oh, uh, apparently it's just up and down on your left stick. <laughs> uh, mm. <clears throat> okay, look. The truth is, those tricks aren't tricks if they produce results. They just seem like tricks because they involve doing a specific input at a specific moment. Rather, where I feel most tutorials fail players is not providing a more comprehensive explanation of how this works, or rather, how you should be using it to steer in the air. A uh, quick PSA here, keep in mind I'm using air roll left for all of my controls and explanations, so if you're an air roll right player, then when I say a direction, you'll need to use the opposite. If you're up for getting the absolute most out of this training, then I would recommend binding both air roll left and right and training them both. Also, I'm going to use the term neutral position quite a lot, and it has a different meaning for on the ground versus in the air versus using air roll. On the ground, neutral refers to the neutral position of the car. Wheels on the ground and the nose facing forward. In the air is the same thing, only our wheels are facing the ground rather than touching them. Now, using air roll, neutral is when you have the car's nose straight up and it's spinning. Now then, here's how down and up steer left and right. If we jump off the ground and pull down on our stick, our nose is going to pitch backwards and bring the hood up of the car towards us. If my nose is pointing straight up and I hold air roll left, our hood is now going to turn away from us to the left. Combine these two inputs with a bit of boost, provided the hood was facing you when you started, and the car is going to start flying to the left. Likewise, if you want to steer right, we just have to use the opposite and push up on the stick. Same applies when you use these inputs while the hood is facing away from you, only this time, pulling down becomes right and pushing up becomes left. Whoa, hold on. 
Before you pause or click off this video because you think I just revealed the magical secret to this mechanic, you're going to want to listen to the rest of this. Steering left or right by pushing up or down on the stick while using air roll comes with a massive Christopher Maloney level butt, which is it should not be considered the end all be all to total aerial control. These types of unidirectional adjustments should be made situationally and for as brief a time as necessary in order to either set or recover the car's position and direction. Again, this is just a very small sample of the greater whole of potential directional adjustments that can be made at any given time for a successful outcome. For example, if we go back to jumping off the ground, getting into the air, pulling down on the stick and holding air roll left, yes, the car does go to the left, but if we hold the stick down, this result isn't what we want. Instead, these inputs should be used just long enough to aim the nose in the direction we want to be flying and then let it go once you're there. We'll discuss more on the directional changes mid-flight later in the video, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward. For this next bit, I'm going to share with you what helped me build my understanding of what to do and when, but I don't want you to think this is the only way it can or should be done. I've seen plenty of people swear by lowering the game's speed as a valuable training method, so if that works for you, then by all means get your money's worth. Regardless, here's what I did. Earlier, I mentioned the rhythm of directional air roll in terms of learning it. Since directional air roll has a max rotation speed, we can rely on timing to help us learn when to provide input for adjustments, which is why I created a reference point. Sort of like in Double Dutch Jump Rope, I started by finding my initial moment of when to jump in as it were with my adjustment input by setting a reference point during the car's rotation of when to do so. Since I use air roll left, I started paying attention to my front left fender. I started slow with one adjustment per rotation. With the knowledge of how to turn left and right while the hood is either facing or away from you, creating your own reference point early on in your training is a simple yet effective way to learn basic aerial steering and control. This of course is where the single stick adjustment method initially came from. Again, this is intended as a starting point and not the secret formula to directional air roll. It can't be stressed enough how easy it is to find success with one or two points of adjustment and think you've mastered the whole thing. Since that's the exact mistake I made, we're going to expand this much further and much quicker than I had tried to do a year ago. For this, we want to train minimizing fail states by building up a knowledge of recovery states. If a fail state is any point during your air roll rotation in which you lose control, a recovery state is a point in which you recognize where you are in that rotation and are able to control it. This is where that initial recovery training comes into play. Forcing your car into awkward positions, pushing yourself to find a recovery point will give you a massive boost in this regard. To get the most out of this, I strongly encourage that you keep pushing and finding as many awkward car positions as you can. It's very easy to get hung up on a set of orientations as it were and only train those, leaving at a world of potential positions untrained and underutilized. As far as how to approach doing this in the air, we need to switch it up a bit. I found two drills that were the biggest contributors to a lot of my growth over the past year and those are wall to air dribbles and smashing my car into the ceiling. Obviously, we can guess which one of these two is more important and has the greater benefit to aerial control, so let's start with the least important one. When using air dribbles and aerial hits to train directional air roll, it's very important that you maintain a considerable level of self-discipline and intentionality. Jumping up after a ball and holding down air roll the whole time is a massive waste of time and boost if you aren't consciously thinking about how you should be adjusting to not just make contact, but to make the contact you want to be making. Let's use wall to air dribbles as our first example. Let's drive up the wall and pop the ball up into the air. Once we get in the air, we want to jump out after it. Now, depending on your choice of directional air roll, left or right, the inputs you need to make in order to get the car upright will vary. For me, going off the left wall only takes 90 degrees of air roll, whereas the right will take 270. This might not seem like a big deal, but if I come off the left wall, hold my air roll left and push down on my stick to the right, my car quickly and perfectly sets up for a neutral aerial position and in line towards the ball. Doing these same inputs off the right wall, while functional, are less efficient due to the period of time in which my car's nose is facing away from the ball before coming back around to face it. Another big contributing factor is momentum. Obviously, if you're already headed in the direction you want to go, then you won't need too much boost to maintain it. When looking to turn or change directions, however, you need to be aware that you'll need to fight that initial momentum, which can take a lot more or less boost depending on how fast you were going in the first place. Not much of a secret really, but when training this mechanic in its entirety, this is just another one of those things you're going to need to be conscious of. We want to try to push ourselves a little further with each step we take. Even a basic setup like the wall to air dribble example has a ton of variance potential. Taking it faster or slower, for instance, can change both the takeoff and the follow-up. Boosting to the ceiling after a setup is also great training for both ceiling shots and mid-shot recovery slash control. I point this out because no matter how you choose to train or which shots you like to train, you should always be looking at new and interesting ways to both set up and execute your shots. 
If you only train one way to do something, just like controlling air roll, you'll end up leaving far too much untrained and ultimately limit your viability as a player. Now, regardless, if you took the idea to set an air roll reference point for yourself, we have something else that needs to be a constant focus for us as well, the nose of the car. This is our North Star, our guiding force. Wherever it's pointing is where we'll go. So, when making these corrections in the air, we want to apply these inputs until our nose is pointing where we want to go. Once you're in line, that's when it's time to let go of the stick and just let Jesus take the wheel here. That doesn't mean not using air roll on contact should you want to or need to, but rather ensuring that you aren't over adjusting on your approach and potentially making a mistake which segues perfectly into the ceiling drill. Efficient directional air roll is best trained when you're forced to regain control of the car under difficult circumstances with as little movement as possible. So what better way to create that than by flying straight into the ceiling? I know, right? Real high tech shit, but if it works, then it isn't stupid. Let's take a look at this drill and how to get the most out of it. The purpose of this drill is to help you create random orientations mid air that you'll need to control. By repeatedly bouncing the nose off the ceiling while holding air roll, we can get into some pretty awkward situations. To start, jump into free play, turn off ball cam, jump up, pull the stick back, fly towards the ceiling, hold directional air roll while you do all of this, and then bump off the ceiling. Your two goals are to keep the car in the air and to get back to your air roll neutral position as quickly as you can. The obvious benefit of this drill is that of course the general aerial control you'll be getting in keeping the car in the air, but the sneaky benefit is training yourself how to get air roll neutral. This is one of the single most important positions you'll need to be successful this mechanic, because once you get to where you're able to get to neutral from nearly any position orientation, you'll have a much easier time learning how to transfer your neutral meaning you'll be able to recover from any position and course correct quickly and efficiently, whether that's trying to read the ball in the air, making a defensive stop, or training in rings maps. The last two drills are ones I believe are not only great ways to train directional air roll, but as you move up through the ranks become crucial tools to your skill set that, if you can, regardless of rank, should start training now. The first is backward saves. The beauty with these is that they provide you the opportunity to train taking your car from an inverted orientation to a neutral one. As you shadow the ball back to your goal, you'll need to be able to jump up, roll your car so that the hood is facing you and then deflect the ball into a safe position. As you get better at these, you'll want to take it a step further and change up how soon or how late you are up to the ball. After that, your post save recovery becomes the focus and before long, you'll be able to take what was a difficult save and change it into ball possession and potentially a scoring opportunity. The second is a bouncing ball. Now, this particular setup has a lot of moving parts that require a fair bit of understanding in order to make a ground air dribble setup possible, but for now, I want you to focus the approach, the touch, and the recovery. Since we're taking this two thirds of the way down the field, you'll have plenty of opportunity to practice simple one touch goals, two touch setups, double taps, flip resets, and more. No matter your prerogative, if your intention is control, then every touch needs to reflect that. Whether you're controlling your speed or direction, try and be as on purpose as you can. Lastly, when you fail to get the touch you want, don't just reset the shot and try again. When you're intentional about what you're doing, even if it's the wrong thing, knowing what you did can help you self troubleshoot what went wrong and how to correct it. Don't just skip over your failure study and try to learn from them. On the topic of failures, I feel it pertinent to make you aware of a very insidious habit learning this mechanic can have. If you're anything like me, you'll have spent or will spend a ton of time, perhaps too much, learning how to control directional air roll. And the moment you feel like you've got a good grasp of it, you'll start using it in every chance you get. I can't stress enough how destructive this practice can be to your overall gameplay and subsequent satisfaction of the game. If and when you fail in a situation in which you were using directional air roll, I want you to step back and objectively ask yourself, was directional air roll necessary. The sooner you can start doing that, the better off you'll be since you'll have invested less time and thus won't have the habit so ingrained that unlearning it will become a whole nother battle on its own. I say this as someone who, as of writing this script, struggles with this exact same thing. So yeah, do yourself a favor and stay mindful, observant, and objective about your mistakes. All in all, these drills and information should help push you to the next level in aerial control. Is this the end of this video? Yes. As I learn and study more, I'll be sure to continue making content on it, but for now, I'll be moving on to other mechanics and techniques. I truly hope these videos have helped you, and if so, please let me know in the comments what sort of things have made the biggest difference for you in your air roll training. I read all of them, and I love hearing from you guys, so for now, be intentional about your inputs, keep them efficient, and we'll see you in the next one.